Good evening and welcome to my channel that's all about horror. My name is Aaliyah and when I was a kid, I mean actually a kid, like five years old, I started watching scary movies like it was my job. Nothing gave me more comfort on my happiest or saddest days like seeing someone get sliced and diced. <laughs> or like seeing an extraterrestrial rip through someone's stomach. Or even seeing someone's face get smashed into pieces. Now, aside from the fact that I do love some scary AF horror, growing up watching Halloween TV programming specials really put me in the Halloween spirit. And don't get me wrong, streaming services today are fantastically convenient but I do think there's something to be said about a curated evening of TV programming that once made the television watching experience just a little less lonely. Which brings me to ABC's TGIF. I'm counting down my top three TGIF shows with the best spooktacular episodes. These three shows shared the lineup in 1996. Season 8, Episode 7, Steveville. It's Halloween night, and Steve, who is now living with the Winslows, is showing off his new look-alike and I must say freaky-looking puppet. Feast your eyes on this! <laughs> when they make fun of his poor ventriloquism skills, he sulks off and whines to Eddie. I just wish I could make this dummy talk. And well, his wish comes true when a bolt of lightning strikes the puppet and brings Steve's worst nightmares to life. I love that it took such a huge leap outside of the show's reality, which is so different from earlier Halloween episodes. Not gonna lie, it was kind of nice and refreshing to see someone or something terrorizing Steve for a change. Steve. Yes? Boo. Because like it or not, he low-key kind of had it coming. Jaleel White garnered such a positive reaction from what was meant to be his first and only episode that they quickly wrote him into the rest of the season. And well, the rest is history. So yeah, I'd say after being the reason the show's focus took a mighty turn, some would say for the worst, he deserved a little fright. Did I do that? One of the best moments is when steve gets up from the couch for the first time and walks. My IQ is 196, I like cheese, I like poker, and I'm perfectly safe. That was like an oh shit moment. <laughs> but despite all the freaky goings ons in this episode, I have to say that the scariest moment for me was when Steve walked past a full grown man who was dressed in all black and crouching behind a chair and didn't even notice him. I'm a little worried that those glasses aren't working very well. Whether you've seen it or not, this episode remains super enjoyable and a must-watch this spooky season. And you can catch it on Hulu. I'm a Molly Dolly, and I'm gonna get you... Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Season 3, Episode 6, Goodwill Haunting. Sabrina and her aunts, Hilda and Zelda, are all invited to their Aunt Beulah's annual Halloween bash. <laughs> Unfortunately, Zelda and Hilda reluctantly RSVP for the event. Which stands for Rotten, Stupid, Vile Party. But Sabrina is allowed to skip it so that she can host a VHS and chill double date with her friends. Perfect night to watch scary movies. Yeah. <laughs> This, however, doesn't sit well with Aunt Beulah, who sends Sabrina a doll that she soon comes to find is possessed and out to get her. The knife, <laughs> I mean the night has just begun. The chaos that ensues is so fun and silly, and I love that it fits right in with the tone of the show. It's very consistent with past and future Halloween episodes. The best moment for me was when Sabrina notices the Molly Dolly sitting behind her and her friends. Ah! What is it? <laughs> that cracked 
we have also the subplot of Hilda and Zelda at Aunt Beulah's party is super entertaining and spooky and really holds its own. You can catch Sabrina and all her witchiness on Hulu as well. And if you're interested in adding a movie to your Halloween queue, perhaps you'll consider watching the original Sabrina film. The film stars Melissa Joan Hart and was produced by her mother, Paula Hart. It originally aired on Showtime and serves as the show's unofficial pilot. You can find the full movie for free on YouTube for now. <laughs> And lastly, if you're looking for something a little on the darker side, don't hesitate to check out the Sabrina reboot on Netflix. Lord of Darkness, ruler of the anguished on All Hallows Eve, your work will be done, but there is one who stands in the way. Hey, Millie Man? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the one who's standing in the way? Boy Meets World Season 5, Episode 5, The Witches of Pembroke. Eric and Jack bump into a girl named Millie in their hallway, played by Candace Cameron of Full House. She's incredibly forward and shows an intense interest in Jack, so much so that she's moving into the apartment a quarter of the way through the episode. Just know that no one will ever feel about you the way that I do. Unfortunately, Jack is too spellbound to see that something very witchy is going on here. When it comes to Boy Meets World and their spooky, scary episodes, I think this one tends to be forgotten about because of the very iconic one that comes later on in this season. But I gotta say, this one is just that hysterical. I think this show is funniest when the characters don't seem to question whether the unbelievable is believable and that it's not afraid to really lean all the way into that. So, Rosemary, how's the baby? <laughs> I also love that we get a little TGIF One Universe crossover with Sabrina Spellman making a short non-canon appearance. Funnily enough, in this episode, Eric says that he bought the book the Bridges of Madison County. <laughs> and in the Sabrina episode, Good Will Haunting, which aired a year later, someone does something similar. The remains of the day, Enchanted April, The Bridges of Madison County. I was also really happy to see Candace Cameron as the bad girl for a change. One for the little pirate, one for the little mermaid. Oh, and a little witch. You don't get any because you mock us. And while this episode isn't a straight up parody of the craft, we can definitely appreciate the homage this episode pays towards our favorite witches of the 90s. Oh yeah? Well then what's gonna happen next? First there'll be some strange shrouded figure creeping behind us that none of us will see. Boy Meets World Season 5 Episode 17 And Then There Was Sean our beloved John Adams crew, Corey, Topanga, Sean, and Angela, are all thrown into Feeney's detention for disrupting the class. When Mr. Feeney steps out of the room for a moment, the group realizes he's locked them inside and that someone or something dangerous is locked in with them. This episode freaked me out when I was a kid. I am I love it. I don't even know like how else to express how much I do. It is probably the best and most memorable of the entire series. Technically, it's not a Halloween episode because it aired in February and premiered 12 episodes after The Witches of Pembroke, but I still watch it every Halloween. <laughs> I am absolutely obsessed with how well it parodies iconic 90s slasher films like Scream. Hello? Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite? Ooh, okay. Well, I like that one with the hottie hot hot from Party of Fire. And I know what you did last summer. And we even get a Jennifer Love Hewitt guest star appearance, which is amazing. Hi, Eric Matthews, and you are? Jennifer Love Pfefferman. <laughs> it really felt like someone who watches these kinds of movies and loves them just as much as any crazy horror fan does wrote this episode. And I mean, even something like this episode being very teen drama driven, more so than normal, can't go unnoticed when it's parodying films written by Kevin Williamson the king of writing overly detailed yet thoughtful backstories for characters who ultimately end up dying. Me? Why me? 
Well, Kenny, it's certainly not going to be any of us. What are you doing? <laughs> Or maybe it can go unnoticed and I'm just a huge nerd. Anyway, there are so many amazing moments in this, but I have to say the pencil bits with Kenny are some of the best. I'll always remember he was that tall. <laughs> Boy Meets World spent its entire seven season run on ABC, unlike Sabrina and Family Matters. When reruns were moved to Disney Channel, some episodes, including this one, needed to be edited in order to be suitable for Disney Channel viewers. But have no fear, because the entire unedited series is available on Disney+. Plus. Thank you all so much for joining me on my first episode. It means so much to me that you were all here to share the evening. I'm really excited to do more. Oh!